Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hank. This is episode 147. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hank. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience, ladies. Hi, um, my name is Tiffany Chavu. I am the new CEO of Somerset Academy Early Learning Center, located at 719 West Gerard Avenue. And I am Kwanda Neely. I am the assistant to the uh, new executive director and also uh, assistant to the CEO as well. So, ladies, I appreciate y'all coming on. We have to start this episode off the right way, though. Sam, my guy, shouts out to my man sipping with Sammy. If you're not sipping with Sammy, you ain't sipping right. Please get your fucking life together. Mm-hmm. Um, we met a couple days ago. Me and Tiff met a couple days ago live on air on Sam's show. And I told her the stuff she started going through her rundown. I said, "Girl, that's an episode." <laughs> so, a man of my word, this is an episode uh, a couple of weeks later. So, <laughs> now we are here spotlight episode. Uh, this episode is solely about what you have going on. You start going through the rundown, and I told you when I people start telling me about stuff that I like, and I feel like we should highlight it, we should promote it, and we should get that out there to the world. I really mean that. So, this is what you do when you say things if you really mean them. You spotlight those situations. So, Tiff, the floor is yours. Break down the situation for the audience, and then we'll start breaking it in specifics, you know. Break, Absolutely. Break. Well, I want to say thank you so much. Um, like you said, we literally just met on a podcast. That was my first podcast. Um, so it was really, you know, interesting. Um, Somerset Academy is a school that was created uh, for our community. We took the suburbs and brought it into the city. And what I mean by that is a lot of times um, in the suburbs, we think, you know, there's all these different programming, there's extra support, there's um, behavioral health, there's sports, there's music. But a lot of times those same programs are not in your regular childcare facilities. We look at them as daycares and just, you know, glorified babysitting. Well, Somerset Academy is not that. We literally took um, a lot of those programming uh, that are in the suburbs and we brought them right here to 7th and Gerard. So Somerset Academy is an early childhood center focusing on infants all the way to after school. We have two, uh, I'm sorry, we have three free preschool programs. We also just started Head Start with a uh, partnership with Gateway. I'm really excited about that. That'll be new for this year. But Quick question. Yes. You said we go all the way to after school, so we go in like pre-K to 12th grade? After school, think um, from after school, more so 6 to 13 years old. Um, okay, when we perfect. talk about our older children after 13, we have a youth program that we're currently um, in right now with JEVS partnership with Jeb's that brings youth into the school for job for job training so we um we do a little bit of that as well and we've been doing that with it used to be the philadelphia youth network it switched over to Jeb's um now and we've done that for the last four years um during the summer and sometimes during the school year so that we can keep a lot of the children that age out of traditional aftercare because the funds are not available so a lot of our children still want to be a part of Somerset. So we created a way for them to stay involved and stay off the streets. We also have a, a couple of okay. nonviolent pro. Yes, a couple of nonviolent programs, Beats Philly Beats, where we talk about how to eradicate violence without using guns, weapons, and um, talking about using the, the arts. So we work with children with uh, spoken word, music, uh, martial arts, uh, photography, um, you know, any type of art program we created here for our youth. We also have Operation Peace that deals with more uh, youth as well as young adults. And we work to get them employed. We have a drone uh, project that they're currently working with. 
uh, learning how to um, make drones and fly drones so that they can eventually go into drone piloting. We also help with getting um, young adults into apprenticeship programs, construction, and uh, housing. So we, we are let a me, gambit. Let me jump in right here. Sure. This is one thing. One thing that we always do, I salute you for, because this is, I always tell people I pay attention when you're talking. Uh, because you said we're stopping at 13 with the program. However, we do have something for those for those kids to get to the high school ages. One thing our kids always do is grow up too fast because we put them in too many grown-up situations that they don't need to be involved in at 14, 15, and 16. Absolutely. And I let me salute and commend you all for saying we now have something else for them to do because... You be a ba- you're a baby, you're a baby, you're a baby until we just push you the hell out. We always do that with the kids that graduate from high school. When you was going on the prom in May, it was my baby. And now in August, as they're going to college, it's, nigga, you grown. You got to figure it out. <laughs> like, right. How you go from a baby to you grown in two months? I don't know. But I, like I said, I commend y'all for still finding something. Because some of them kids, just because they turned 14 or th- 15, don't mean his mom Absolutely. still ain't never home. And he still is in a dangerous situation that he needs somewhere safe to be. Absolutely. And, and and like I said, when parents and, and when we say that we stop at 13, that's not because Somerset wants to. Um, the fundings and the powers that be, they do not fund children after 13. And that is why our founder, uh, Mrs. Uh, Pennock, created these additional programs so that, like you said, there are parents that are say, wait, my child is 13, but I don't want them at home, you know, by themselves Mm -hmm. just yet. And which that is why we created so many other um, things for for young people to do, because we understand that everybody does not want their 14, 15 year old home. All right. I cut you off. So, again, listening when you're talking, you was going into the martial arts and the the, uh, you was going into the creative side of things that y'all had going on. Yes. So um, we we offer music. We have a behavioral specialist on staff that supports our teachers and parents and the uh, students. So if you have a child that you may think, well, I don't know if my child should go to school because, you know, a lot of programs are saying, nope, you got to come and pick up because they don't have that added support in a classroom. We have that. Um, when there's a lot of uh, parents that are saying, well, my child needs a one-to-one uh, to be in school, but it's taking too long to get those services. We have a behavioral specialist that can, you know, help you to quickly cut through that red tape. And at the same time, we have um, added support in the classrooms so that that our staff can be that one to one until those services start. And we created that um, because uh, we were blessed to be funded by Philly Pre-K and Pre-K Counts. And we've used, you know, a lot of those funds to have added support for our, our children. All right, I got a question. Now, Somerset Academy, how long have we been doing Somerset Academy? Because you said we're trying to bring the suburbs into the city, down on 7th Street, North Philly. We'll have all that in the description, folks. But uh, how long have y'all been doing Somerset Academy? This is going on year nine. Yes, we're in the okay, year nine. Fourth grader, okay. Y'all damn near <laughs> middle school. Go ahead, y'all. Yes, we're, we're in year nine, um, and uh, we will be celebrating on August 17th, our fifth year, and last year doing the Philly Beats Project, where we were uh, eradicating violence through, um, through, the, through the arts. And where will we be doing the celebration there for the folks that can pull up? Do y'all need some sponsorships? Yes, do y'all absolutely. need people to, we, do y'all yes. need people to come out and vend? Let's walk through all of that situation yes. the 17th because this episode will be out a little bit before the 17th, but you know, we can yes. make those things happen. August, August 17th, please, if you are interested in vending, we want every and anyone. It's a free, it's free. You don't have to pay to be a vendor. We just ask that you bring a table and chairs, um, you know, for whatever merchandise you're going to sell. We will shut down the, the block 719 West Gerard Avenue. It's from 11 to 3, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're asking everyone who's coming to Ben to start arriving by 9.30 so that we can have everything set up. We'll have food trucks. We're going to have a stage with artists. Uh, we have moon bounces. There will be so many different activities for, for youth. Uh, we've always had, it's always about the youth. We are in, 
the servicing children. We are here to service the children and their families. So if you need support, we have families that just come sometimes and say, I need a bag of food. And that's what we do. We have a chef on staff. Uh, our children eat very well and healthy. Um, our chef prepares breakfast, lunch, and snack. One day a week, we have food from a different culture. One day a week, we have food that has no meat. And one day a week, we are incorporating more of a raw diet. Uh, again, health and, um, health and wellness is critical to our youth and in our communities. Every Friday, we give out fruit. Uh, we give out a basket of fruit and during the holidays. We give out baskets of food. And so, you know, again, anything that our families and the community need, we try to uh, make sure that we are here to service them. All right. So um, <laughs> full disclosure with the audience, I got my tooth pulled the other day, y'all. So <laughs> smiling and, and laughing hurts like hell right now. Um, but... I, again, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. This is why I tell people all the time. It's like, I don't want to burn this out on the phone with you because I want to give you my real reaction. I don't want to be just like, oh, I already knew she was going to say this and I knew she was going to say that. Some of the stuff me and you talked about and some of the stuff we didn't talk about. So, yes, sir. Again, for whoever's listening to this, if you've been in, you need some volunteers or anything, y'all looking for a little extra aid or anything. Then, yes. Yes, come out. She said this is a free situation. All you need to do is have your time. This is an easy way for you to have something to do with your kids. That would be a cool environment for you to bring your kids. Yeah. Those are the hardest things to do. It's like, I want to take my kids to wherever, but you never know how them niggas going to act around there when you get there. <laughs> yeah. This is not that type of situation. So you said this would be 11 to 3 on the 17th, 11. correct? Yes. We're celebrating our fifth anniversary. Yes. Of our jamboree. Yes. We've been doing the uh, jamboree now for five years. So this year is really going to be um you know big uh we have some artists some philadelphia artists that will be performing skrilla cyb um we're going to have a martial arts demonstration so we have a lot of stuff you know going on uh at the uh, jamboree again it is august 17th from 11 a.m to 3 p.m um and if you would like to come and then sell anything please come on and support if you would like to donate anything, we're going to have a table that really we're just going to give away clothes, books. Uh, we're going to be enrolling for the free preschool program and for school. You'll be able to come and tour the school and um, meet some of the teachers, uh, see the classrooms. Each of our classrooms is named after, after a college. Um, we believe that you are walking through the hollow halls of academia. And even at this young age, uh, we want to prepare our children for the future and whatever future that may um, that may be. So each of our classrooms uh, is named after a specific college, and we are looking forward to that college coming out and supporting our, our young people. So something that you just do there, subliminal messaging is what that is. Uh, if you are told from the time that you are four to the time that you tend that you ain't never going to be nothing or you have to look out for your little brother, your little sister, or if you're always talked down to, then when you grow up, you're going to think that that's what, that's what's going to get normalized to you. That's what love looks like to you. And if you're constantly put in an environment, like you said, we're doing preschool to eighth grade, basically. If you're constantly put in an environment of positivity and love and those affirmations or doing different activities, eating healthy, these are all the type of things that we do not have and people right. just gloss right over. Uh, so again, like I said, I didn't know all of this. So <laughs> salute to you and salute to y'all because we need this type of stuff in our community. We need this type of shit to be highlighted yeah. and to be celebrated and to be put on the pedestal and let people know that, yo, there are people in the world who are doing good things. Everybody's not bad. I'm trying never to paint everybody with a broad brush, trying not to ever talk in just generalities because your interaction with somebody, me and Sam's relationship ain't got to do with you in the same relationship. Like, you right. might be like, right. man, he said this, that, and me, or whatever to me, and I ain't like it. It's like, all right, well, me and him ain't had it. So I, you can't always carry that baggage with people. But when people throw something this good out there, like I said, I feel like we should highlight it. We should salute this situation. Thank you so much. And now, you said to me earlier, we're going to give him a little behind the scenes, the martial arts situation. Talk to us a little bit about the martial arts because I know that was your thing. 
That was what you yes. initially started talking about when we met them. So let's right. talk about that a little bit. Yes. Um, I, I brought martial arts to Somerset. Um, I am a martial artist. I am a black belt um, it's in Taekwondo under the uh, instruction of Grandmaster Mike Madison and uh, our, with the Community Karate School. And we are also under Grandmaster, Super Grandmaster now, uh, Ozzy Wright, who was uh, also a former, former teacher. So I, I, I am surrounded by um, educators. Um, and one of the things that I learned with my own children that martial arts really helps not only your discipline in, you know, phys physical aspects, but really how to handle situations, how to handle problems, how not to react to everything. When, when, and I'm sure this is the same with boxers or any, any type of MMA fighter, but when you have a skill set that you know that, you know, I don't really have to argue or I know how to, you know, just walk away because you know that you have something that if someone does come into my center of, you know, whose face, it may not work out in That's someone the, else's favor. It's a discipline. Absolutely. Absolutely. A, see, this is again goes back to the double entendre situation of going back to, like I said, if you get those things as a kid, then they're kind of what becomes normalized to you. I'm Muslim. Absolutely. And when my brother was four, brother's four years older than me. He hit puberty at 12. So that means at eight, mom, dad, and my brother are all fasting. So I'm not going to just be in the house cooking and eating. So the discipline that was instilled in me was we just ain't eating. I don't care what you're cooking. I don't care what you're making. When it's Ramadan and we ain't eating, we just ain't eating. Right. And I lost 20 pounds in a day, <laughs> one day at work. <laughs> it was Ramadan in July and, you know, 100 and something degrees moving around. You wow. tip those scales, you feel good. You feel good about yourself when you tip those scales at eight thirty. But um, yeah, that's a that's having something that that grounds you. That's a discipline. That's understanding that everything ain't always just a let's be super aggressive towards the situation. One thing about me is I tell people all the time I give everybody the same energy except my mom. And sometimes I come off to it too much of that same yo, <laughs> and it ain't that type of situation. But yeah, damn, my face hurts. <laughs> It's that it's that discipline that you you can uh, you can revert back to is the type of thing that we talk about again with the martial arts and all. So my yep. bad, go ahead. No, but I mean you're right. You're ex ex exactly right. Um, I saw how it affected you know my children. Um, watching them, um, I started you know I joined and then you know I just kept at it even through you know hardships. Uh, I you know stuck at it and brought that to the school. I even, once I got my black belt, even came back to school to show what hard work and discipline gets you. Um, and walked into school, you know, that next day with my black belt on um, to show, you know, that if you, if you persevere and you stick with something, no matter how long it may take, you can accomplish anything you, you know, want to do. You mentioned something about affirmations. We also, every morning, um, we have a Harambe circle. Harambe yep. in Swahili means, what does it mean? Let's pull together. Pulling together. Yes. And so every morning, our children say good morning in six different languages. They um, do cheers and chants that allows them to recognize themselves or other people that, you know, they just want to say, hey, I recognize that my mom brought me some you know, cookies or that Miss Kwanda is my teacher and I love her. Um, but we, but the most important thing in, you know, talking about affirmations is that we provide them with affirmations every single day. We tell them that they are doing a great job. And not only do we give them the affirmations, we're helping them to spell, we're, help, we're helping them to speak, to be better public speakers. Um, because there's some children that you may not necessarily hear them in the classroom, but during Harambe, they'll say, I, I got it, I got it, recognition, I got it. And you want to spotlight them. When you talk about spotlighting, we spotlight our children. If there's a birthday, we spotlight that. We change different songs that you may know, and we give it a really cool, you know, spin. So the children, you know, really get to spell. And, and again, 
hear those positive affirmations. We tell them they're doing a good job, good job, good job, good job. G O O D J O B. Good job, good job. Again, yep. that's a thing that <laughs> that creates positive traits in a kid. That creates Absolutely. positive traits in a not even a preteen or a teenager in some cases. Because if it's something that they've been doing for years, people could always do it. We can always get people to do an episode about what don't you like about dot, dot, dot. But if you ask the same question in reverse about what do you like about this, that, or whatever, people are going to hem haw and be, ah, I don't know what to say. Now you're mm -hmm. struggling for an answer. People always want to gear towards the negative, which is, again, I hate the narrative that, like, Philly, we can't ever do shit together. And we can't mm -hmm. ever put things together or work together in these situations. And I tell people all the time, that's just all about who you fucking with. If you mess with the type of people who are looking to connect situations or looking to do good or have genuine aspirations for things to be better, then that's what you will get. But if you stick with negative people looking to do negative things, then that's what you will get. And if, like you said, we're doing every day where we're just, even if it's just the appreciation of my mom drove me here, my dad walked me here then appreciating the little things will make you eventually understand the bigger things. But it takes those little steps because everybody's not going to win the lottery and now everything's just peaches and cream. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I want to switch it over to Mrs. Di Mrs. Assistant Director. She's been quiet over here. I know people have just been seeing she's popping in and out from time to time. We're going to throw some of this heat towards her now because we need to hear from her and figure out Absolutely. Oh boy. What are, some, what are some of your favorite things about the Sunrise Academy. Excuse me, damn, Summer I said Sunrise. Summer Set, excuse me. Summer <laughs> Set Academy, excuse me. Again, I'm dealing with this tooth situation. I, I understand. <laughs> um, well, I, I came on board six years ago now. Um, I, well, six and a half years now. Um, Don't cheat yourself out them six months, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cheat yourself out them six months. All right, right. Six and a half years. Um, but I, I, I came on board because I bore into the vision and the mission of the school, which was to give the same um, opportunities for our children in the community that the school is in, like you would see in the suburbs. And that's what I bore into as an educator because I came there as a teacher, um, still am, um, working with our young toddlers, then older toddlers, then preschoolers. Um, so kind of growing with the children also. Um, so even through ups and downs and people say, well, how have you been here so long? You know, and I tell them even on a bad day here, because everywhere, every, everywhere has its good or, or, or not so good days. But even on a not so good day, I've seen worse, which means you really have to be invested in what you like. Remember your why is what I think about. I, I think about why I chose to be a teacher. I think about why I chose to stay where I am because I have a, not only a connection with the staff and, you know, the, the, the administrators and, you know, the founder and the CEO, I have a connection with these children and I have a connection with their families. And, you know, the little bit that I do is helping these children and these families is why I got to stay. I got to I have to be here. I got to make sure that it's, you know, I see it all the way through. I give them the little tidbits, and then I got to see it all the way through. That's, that's it's nothing, my it's heart. Nothing be, it's nothing better than basically planting the seed and watching it grow, especially yeah, with those little kids when it's like yeah. you gave somebody something, and then years later they come back and say, yo, I remember you told me this, that, or whatever, and I might not have caught it for the first eight years, but now right. it makes sense. Right. And... I know that has to be like the big thing for teachers. It is. And we're, we're seeing that now. A lot of children I had were infants when I started and seeing them grow to where they graduated from us and went to kindergarten. But even though they're in a different school now, they're here with us during the summer because they, you know, have that connection with us and were asked, where do you want to go for summer? They asked to come back with us. So that's, that says a lot. And that means a lot. Okay, so now we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to have a little fun with y'all. We've gotten all the serious information. We're going to dive, we're going to reverse back to the more of the serious information. We're going to have a little fun now. This is the Get to Know segment, which is sponsored by Custom Hustle. That is at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. It's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do the custom jerseys, custom jackets. We got four versions of the sneaks, the sunglasses, the pocketbooks, 
the sweatshorts, the sweatsuits, uh, the collar shirts in case you got an interview coming up or whatever, barber capes, however you need it, we're hustling it and customizing it over there at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. Now, are y'all into TV shows? That's more of a Kwanda thing. Okay, I can't. So I, I missed the question. Are we into TV, TV shows? TV shows, absolutely. Which is what is the character that most spoke to you? Pick any <laughs> show, any genre, whatever it is. What character spoke to you the most? <laughs> ah, she's kind of hard. Uh, it's just supposed you know. to be we paid talent over here, we're professionals <laughs> over here. How to hustle podcast? Behind. We're not throwing out softballs. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. I'm more of a TV show person than than uh, I can't say I don't like movies. I don't have a um, a lot of time to watch, you know, movies or you know. So you, pay, you got you got paper degree. Like you when I can catch it, I'll catch an episode and you know. Um, oh man, I couldn't um, answer. Yeah, you know, one of the shows I like now is um nine one one. Okay. With, this is the uh, Angela Bassett, the one with yes. Angela Bassett. All right, yes. people keep talking about this show. I might have to watch this one. Shout out <laughs> to my man, Mr. Know It All. They was talking about it when we was on that. Um, Very good. What's your Very favorite good. quote? Oh. Um, this is for both of y'all now. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, my favorite, my my favorite quote, honestly, is "I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me." Um, and I know I don't know if you know you were. Um, you know, speaking in that terms, but it nah, is this, what this is. This is hold on. This is your answer, okay? This is not my <laughs> answer. This is not get to know hype. This so, is get to know you. Okay? Yeah. Can, <laughs> so um, that this answer is your answer. That has gotten me um, through um, just about everything. You know, right now, um, it certainly got me through my black belt test as I was sparring at the very end um, of that tired. Um, I just kept saying I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, it got me through uh, cancer, so it you know. Oh, let's um, hey, let's not yeah. gloss over that one. Hey, my aunt, <laughs> yeah. I think my aunt beat breast cancer three times. So wow. Let's not. Wow. Oh yeah, my aunt yes. was the lady on the billboard when you was going down ninety five, the pink joint. That was her. So let's oh. not let's yeah. salute that. Yeah. You know. So that that um so that's that is my favorite quote. All right, come on. What's your favorite quote? Um, mine, mine would be um, by Dr. Martin. Run, and if you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But whatever you do, keep moving. Oh, I like that. I, I, that's, I got that me through, that's gotten me through a lot. Like, however you get there, you got to get there. My biggest win was Don't stop moving, keep moving. Finish that sentence for me. My biggest win was my my biggest win was my biggest win was getting my black belt. Okay. That means it's your turn now. She answered the question. <laughs> I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this from one of my staff developments. Like my um, biggest win. My, that, yeah, that is good. That is I tell it makes me, you think. If, if um, you go if, if you biggest, go plagiarize one of my joints, that's perfectly fine. All you gotta do is tell them. So look, when you search the How to Hustle podcast with Hype, Hype only accepts five stars. So on episode <laughs> 147, we talked about this, and yes, this sir. is where I'm gonna refer yes, you sir. to. But yes. you only tell them I only accept five. You don't accept four. I don't know what three or two looks like. <laughs> Okay. So what's your biggest win, Q? Um, conquering my, um, when I went for my CDA, is a childhood development um, certification. I fought so hard for that, like blood, sweat, and tears. The pandemic came that tried to put a hold on it to the point that I was going to be like, you know what, just forget. Maybe it's not for me to get it. Just forget it. And I had people behind me pushing me. You started it, finish what you started. And so when I finally got it, it was like, you know, that that really just, yeah. So now I'm one of the I'm a coach for 
other staff, like other staff that we have there that are going for theirs now. And I'm coaching some of them and pushing them, giving them the same push that I got. Fit, you started it, now finish it. You would be saying the other staff at the Somerset Academy. Um, <laughs> now, last one. This is one thing I need to know now. This is an even lighter heart one. What's the last thing that made you smile? <laughs> Y'all could just both say hype because you both just smiled. Copy that. <laughs> Mm. Wow! Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say hi. We don't have to get too. We don't have to get too yeah, personal, because, okay? But, because if, if, the, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. The the last thing that you know what I'm gonna say it. The last thing that made me smile was a gentleman by the name of Job. That that is the last that is the last thing that made me and I'm laughing because Kwanda and I were talking about it. So that is the last thing that um that made me smile. Yeah. Okay, copy that. I don't know if last night was date night or anything again. No, 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 not not even, not even. No, no, no. I'm talking about because no Q Q was smiling and she was like, I don't know if I should share this type of look with what I was was what I was getting. So like I, I said, I, we didn't have to get too personal. No, I think that she knew what I was going oh, she to knew what you, Okay, okay. Yeah, that, I, wasn't that's sure, why. I wasn't sure if she was going to say it. That was the part. I was like, is she going to say it or is she not going to say it? But yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. All right, come on. What's the last thing that made you smile? Um... Mm, froze on me. Did she freeze? Uh, kind of along the same lines. Uh, and so the, the the husband made it um a uh, date night. So we went to see Bad Boys. I mean, it's not it's not major, but that's yeah. Aww. My wife went to go see Bad Boys. If they could stop waiting twenty, if they could stop waiting twenty five years between movies, that would be great. I know. <laughs> I know. They coming out in wheelchairs in this next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So lastly. The close out the show is to get to know is, is not get to know, excuse me. This is what we need to know. Now this is a spotlight episode. So y'all told us what we need to know. But what we need to know is sponsored by H2H Cleaning. That is my cleaning company. We do roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, clean outs. We chop down trees. We do a little gardening if that's what you need. We wow. do remodeling, however you need it. We're making it happen over there at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. We're here to help. Just tell us how we can help. We are not handling any septic tanks. I like to tell people that. We can handle in-house plumbing situations. We don't do anything outside. Dig a hole for your situation. We can't do that. And we also have power washing. I tell people from the rip, power washing is expensive before you call. But that is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. Ladies. Mm-hmm. That is great to know. That is that's oh, yes. great to know. We have some people um, are- here. So we'll definitely talk. Um, mm-hmm. we, have, we have an outside garden and some, you know, um, greenery that we're, you know, looking to uh, uh, keep up with. Um, so let's make sure we, you know, talk about that. Hey, listen, we, I, we, from a full-time hustler, I tell people that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, like I said, this is a spotlight episode. So the whole thing is geared towards what we need to know from y'all. But before we close this one out, lastly, give us the last rundown of the situation for those kids to sitting in the back acting like they're not paying attention because they're connected to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, okay, so we are... That's doing a couple of things right now. We are enrolling for our uh, free preschool program. Philly Pre-K, Pre-K counts. If you have a child that will be three prior to September 1st, school is free from 8 to 2.30. Um, We have Head Start that will also get you some free uh, child care for infants and one-year-olds and two-year-olds. We have an after-school program. So if you need um, your child to get picked up from school, and you are in our radius, uh, please come and uh, contact Somerset Academy. Last but not least, um, if you want to be like Kwanda and uh, buy into the vision and the mission of Somerset, we are looking to hire. Uh, We um, are growing and we have grown. And so we need more teachers uh, that also have Kwanda's um, love and passion uh, for supporting children. So please, 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 Come and uh, look us up. We are, you know, a happy family. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, that in uh, different, um, I guess, work environments. But, it's, you know, you can certainly talk to Kwanda. 
Uh, she will tell you the truth. Uh, that is, you know, we all know Kwanda to tell us the truth. But it is. It is like a family atmosphere. And while you always do not get along with your family, um, you know how to say, look, I, I love you. Let's figure this out um, because we are a family. So that is, you know, what I would say is, you know, what we're doing right now. We're enrolling for a free preschool. The number to reach us is 267-639-9663. Somerset Academy, located at 719 West Gerard Avenue. Copy that. Ladies, if nobody else tells y'all this, thank you. We need more people out there in the community doing this type of work. Also, the fifth anniversary is on August the 17th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you would like to vent, the situation is free. All it is is an opportunity. All you can ever give people in life is an opportunity. What they do with that opportunity is up to them. But That's like great. I said, let me say thank you to y'all from uh, from everybody. Thank you. We need more people thank doing this you. type of thing. We Appreciate need more people you. doing these type of things. And this is the first of many situations that we'll be able to work out together. Thank so you I appreciate so y'all coming on. I appreciate everybody hitting the button. That was episode 147. We are out. I am hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up.